The host has started broadcasting the meeting on YouTube. All right, welcome everyone. So today I'm super excited. I have my very good friend Asha here, and we are going to be talking about astrology. So I know a lot of you have been broadcasting. I know a lot of you have been asking about the eclipse season. I'm not an astrologer. Um, all I know is what I've channeled and, of course, what I feel. And, man, it's been really intense lately. So um, I wanted to kind of just go ahead and get started with what I've channeled about what's happening, the current vibe, and then we're going to go right into Asha and kind of what she's seen within the astrology. And I want to mention that, you know, Asha's been my friend for five, at least five years now. Wow. Um, and it's like, you know, I've seen a lot of different astrologers, but you gave me my Saturn return reading. Um, and you also put out a video at the beginning of this year, just on Instagram. And the video was about how like energetically or astrologically things are just in a very like slow pace. And there's, there was a lot of like, um, kind of like deep down internal thinking and like processing and healing and like trauma stuff. And then you said, just wait until April because April is when things are going to really pick up. And what's so interesting is we're at the end of March and it's, there's still a lot of like deep internal like introspection, but there's also a ton of movement that I'm feeling in my own life, like rapid pace, like things are moving really quickly. Um, so, I mean, your words just like totally tune back into to my energy of like, it's happening, you know, and and here we are in April. So this is a perfect time to talk about it. So what I've channeled, and then we're going to go into astrology. Um, what I've channeled is that the past couple of years, there's been a lot of seeds planted. And when I talk about this, I'm talking about it both at an individual level and at a, a global level. Um, and so like a lot of like new energy seeds planted, but the seeds haven't grown. And then, um, it just feels like there's, um, a lot of solar flares coming in that vibration, the energy is increasing. And um, we've got obviously eclipse season and there's been a lot of weird glitches, a lot of weird timeline hopping. Um, and the, the sentence that I channeled for 2024 is that anything that is hidden will be revealed. All that is hidden will be revealed. And that actually came to me in the middle of the night, like in a dream. And it was just so profound. And I feel like this is the year of this like great unraveling, but we're also kind of torn between the old earth energy, the old earth frequency, and just like destroying that and, and bringing that breaking that down but then also that new earth energy with solutions coming in and higher vibrations um and all of that um and then as far as like moving into i know a lot of people have been talking a lot of different sort of conspiracies and like weird like alignment of different things happening with this april 8th um solar eclipse and what I channeled is that there's absolutely a very real possibility for some sort of like grid down situation. And it's tough because right now we're we're in a place where kind of all of these different timelines exist simultaneously. So it's kind of difficult to pinpoint just one. So part of what I uh, was looking into was that absolutely there's a possibility for a false flag event to happen um, that's like created or put on to create more fear or distraction um, or to like coerce people in different directions. But then there's also a very real threat. I mean, you could call it, but a real, very real possibility of like a solar flash event happening. And I think with the eclipse um, and there's some, and I, I'm sure you 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 don't know too much about it, but there's this devil's comet that's also coming really close to planet Earth um, in April as well. So there's a lot of different events. And when we have a comet coming close to Earth and we have solar flares and we have an eclipse, the energy is really, really primed. And so the word that keeps coming to me for the next couple of months is like amplification. Like it feels like all of the seeds that we've planted in the last couple of years, they're all coming into fruition. They're all starting to really grow. 
So it's going to be intense. So all of our challenges are going to be intense. All of our successes, all of our new opportunities are going to be really intense, but it just feels like this energy is amplified. So um, it was difficult to pinpoint like, is there going to be some sort of catastrophic event or not? Is it planned? Is it not? So timeline wise, things are very kind of open and even a little bit chaotic, but we're primed for the transformation. We're primed for the, the new opportunities coming in. So that's what I've channeled. I just wanted to start with that. And now I'm really curious to see kind of where that lands with astrology, um, you know, coming up into April. So yeah, give us all the details. What's going on? Okay, great. Um, so let's first start talking about what eclipses signify in astrology. Mm -hmm. Eclipses are generally endings and beginnings. Okay. They close doors so that new doors can open. We just had an eclipse, a uh, south node lunar eclipse in Libra, and that one was more internal. There was a lot of reflecting going on, and there was a lot of purging going on. So it's almost like it was a full moon lunar eclipse. So there's a lot of purging and reflecting on like things we've outgrown, things that um, are no longer serving us for our higher good. And if things have been falling off the last two weeks for people, there is a reason for it. Mm -hmm. When Which was I that mean, eclipse? That happened on March 25th. So okay. this week, yeah, on Monday, but we feel the eclipse energy sometimes like up to two weeks before and two weeks after. So we're already in these portals, right? Mm -hmm. And so that because that was a full moon, full moons are all about completions and ending cycles. And this solar eclipse in April is a new moon, total solar eclipse and new moon eclipses are all about new beginnings, fresh starts, new opportunities. So there is an opportunity to jump into timelines. Mm -hmm. I also hesitate to give like specific predictions of like exactly what will happen because there is an element of free will that is also at play here, right? The astrology tells us the weather and it tells us the archetype of the energy, right? Like this is what's happening, but we also have free will to decide what we do about that energy, right? Like I can tell you, it's almost like getting a weather report. I can tell you it's gonna rain outside tomorrow, but you still have free will to decide if you go outside in the rain with an umbrella, or if you go outside and you don't care about protecting yourself from the rain, or if you just want to stay indoors and watch Netflix and movies all day long, right? You're getting like a weather report of what's happening. So sorry if you hear that motorcycle outside. You're getting a weather report of what's happening, but essentially we also have free will. So yes. if people are like falling into the trap of the fear mongering of like, this is the doomsday end of the world, then you're kind of missing the point. Mm is what I would say. I would say you're falling into the trap. If we are all able to choose our own timelines and we are constantly living in the fear and the anxiety of like worst case scenario, then we could very easily be manifesting that scenario by continuing to think about it and continuing to live in that energy, yeah. right? So what I like to say is live aware, but don't live in fear. Mm -hmm. So if you want to prepare, there is a possibility that things could shut down. Also, because there is a Mercury retrograde that's happening simultaneously, mm. from April 1st to April 24th in the same sign, in the sign of Aries, which is the same sign of this solar eclipse. And Mercury retrogrades are notorious for causing delays, miscommunications, glitches in technology, Wi-Fi issues, phone issues, TV issues, like all of these things you know, delays in travel, all of these things are notorious with retrogrades in general. And the other thing to understand about this eclipse is it's a North node eclipse and North node in astrology is what we're going towards. Mm. It's like what we're supposed to be evolving into. Yeah. So there's should be less fear on like, Oh my God, is this a doomsday thing of more of like, what do I need to be stepping into spiritually to prepare myself for the next level? Right. Yeah, absolutely. And so, I mean, even when we think, even though the, the video is titled Doomsday, um, because I think that there is a lot of that rhetoric going on right now. And like even some of the religious people who are awakened or, you know, into the conspiracies, they're thinking like, this is like, you know, this is the end times, right? Like there's a lot of kind of rumor that it's the end times. And and like I was mentioning, there's like some numerology behind that. And 
Um, and people are looking at even where the eclipse is um, really hitting in America, which is fascinating. And uh, and so I do think that any sort of ending is is ultimately a beginning. Um, and I do believe that um, there are some truth nuggets, as I like to call them, in the Bible and different religious texts. And I do think that there are aspects of the book of Revelations. And what I've said, and I've said this to even like, um, you know, uh, God-fearing Christians as well, which is, I do believe that Jesus is coming back, but not in the way that you may be assuming. Like, I, I really think that it's Christ consciousness. And before we bring back this Christ consciousness, because he was ultimately a, a master, an ascended master, um, and he, his mission was unconditional love. So if we could all have a little piece of that Christ consciousness and that Jesus within us and reawaken that, I think that that would be incredible. And before we get to that place of the book of Revelations, the doomsday, um, you know, we've we've got to collapse the old system before we step into the new that new earth frequency, that Christ consciousness frequency. So uh, part of me is like, bring it on. You know, um, and I do want to kind of side note here that, um, you know, my community knows like I'm a prepper and uh, I have been one for a very long time. And I always recommend that people have, you know, food and water stored up just in case things happen or just in case the grid shuts down or whatnot. Um, so I really love that point that you bring up, which is, you know, the doomsday is really just um uh it's a recreation is what it is right we have to collapse in order to transform and so yeah. it's going to be a very transformative time and um aries i believe you've taught me this uh i don't even know what my freaking rising sign was before i met you um aries no is, aries is the beginning of the entire horoscope yeah 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 and so there's also like it's like yeah. an ending and, and a beginning though as well, right? With all of this energy. 100%. And also, which I'm sure we'll get into the whole Pluto and Aquarius thing, but I'm yeah. glad that you talked about the prepping because I don't want to tell everybody like you're completely in the clear and don't prepare, right? right? We want to be aware. We want to be like active, but not reactive, right? So if there's fear, maybe there's like a subconscious thing going on that like you, you feel in fear that you're maybe not quite ready in case there is a solar flare or something does shut down. So stock up on water if it makes you feel more secure. Get food in your fridge if you want to, right? Make sure you have gas in your car, take out cash, do things to prepare yourself, but don't live in the anxiety every single day, right? The other thing I wanna mention is on um, March 10th, that's happening, oh, sorry, not March 10th, April, mm -hmm. right after this eclipse, there's going to be Mars and it's going to conjunct Saturn in Pisces. Last time Mars conjuncted Saturn in Aquarius, that was March 15th, 2020. And mm -hmm. that's when we went into lockdowns oh, and wow. lockdowns, but this was in the sign of Aquarius and Aquarius is a sign that is all about the collective. It is about humanity and it is about people. It's mm -hmm. not going to happen the same way again, because it's happening in the sign of Pisces and Pisces is more about like collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. about psychic things transcendence okay so i think that as things start to come up to the surface it's more about like where are we giving our power away to mm -hmm. like what we're watching what we're absorbing what are we believing and where are we not like going inward spiritually when we need to be yeah. because so much of this energy right now that's happening in pisces simultaneously with all of these eclipses is really like continuing to build this year is just a build up year to 2024. So 2025, which is going to be a build up year to 2026, honestly. Yeah. So a lot of what's happening is like forcing us to really break down of like, what is actually real? Mm -hmm. What did we think was real? Where, where have we been like disillusioned and falling into fantasy? Whereas like idealism versus realism, that's like the planetary energy right now. So if you're falling into the trap of like the simultaneously, two things are happening, right? People are having spiritual awakenings more than ever before, because that's what the astrology is pushing us to do. But everyone's anxiety is building at the same time. Yeah. So it's like, you don't, it's almost like it's happening for you, but you don't really fully trust it because you've been made to believe something else. And you've been made to believe by programming, by what you're watching on TV, by the news, everything else that you can't trust yourself. Mm. 
Yeah. And I feel like that's what we're doing right now. Like even personally in 2024, it's just been such a roller coaster ride of a lot of things, but I find that it's just been so internal. So like, what do I believe and what do I want and where am I going based on what I believe and what I want and next steps and direction. So uh, like personally, I've just been so kind of caught in between and battling and my own community knows I've been internally battling so much stuff. Um, and it just aligns to everything that you've mentioned with the astrology. So at an internal level, what does April look like? What does May look like? What does June, like what do the next couple of months look like? And, you know, how can we really prepare for that based on what we just came from in the last three months? Yeah. So the last three months have, well, first Pluto moved into Aquarius in January, which was a really big deal, which I'm sure we'll talk about at some point. Yeah. And then that kind of brought a lot of things up to the surface and brought a lot of things to light that maybe were, was hidden from us or we didn't realize what was going on. Right. Pluto is the God of the underworld. So it goes in deep and reveals things that are beneath the surface that yeah. we don't quite see. So almost like the beginning of the year, there was like this sudden boom of like, wait, what the hell's going on, right? And then things kind of slowed down and we were forced to like integrate a lot of this information. So right now there's a slow down period where a lot of people have been, at least a lot of my clients have been feeling frustration because we're like, okay, well, I got clarity on this, or I think, at least I think I did. And now like I'm waiting for things to move and I'm waiting for things to move and suddenly things aren't moving forward. It's because we're supposed to be integrating right now. We're supposed to be releasing things. So much of what's happening is forcing us to step into higher consciousness, a lot of people are having ego deaths that haven't had them before or having next level of those, right? Because we don't just have one, we have many. And we're being forced to release things that we've outgrown. And it's interesting that you talked about Aries because Aries is the I am energy. It's mm -hmm. like, who am I? Uh, who is me? And yeah. also this eclipse is conjuncting Chiron. And Chiron in astrology is the wounded healer. And Chiron really brings up like our old wounds of like, where have I not been speaking up for myself? Where have I not been authentic in myself? Where have I been people pleasing? And I've been afraid because I'm worried that like, I'm going to stir the pot or people aren't going to accept me. Where am I living in fear and giving my power away to others? Yeah. Aries energy is bold and brave and courageous. It's yeah. like a leader. It's a trailblazer. So, so much of what's happening in April, so much of March was all about purging these old timelines, yeah. right? An integration to prepare ourselves to step into new timelines that are going to be starting next month. So if you're feeling tired right now, it means you should be resting. Mm -hmm. Eclipses, the other thing I like to say about eclipses, it's not ideal times to like get in the way. Okay. Because eclipses are associated with the nodes in the sky, they're associated with the North node and the South node. They're very much related to destiny, karma, fate, even though there is free will involved, the archetype of these energies are still happening, right? Okay. So it's not our job to get in the way and try to control things. A lot of the astrology is forcing us to release control. So much of this like doomsday stuff is everyone's like, oh my God, I need to control everything. I need to plan for this, this, and this, this, because like I need to control my life in some way, mm -hmm. right? Well, if you're feeling that way, then where, again, where have you given your power away? Yeah. So April, let's go backwards, right? We start off with the Mercury retrograde, April 1st. Yeah. The irony there, right? April Fool's Day, suddenly it's yeah. Mercury retrograde. Yeah. So it's almost, and then we have an eclipse that's all about new beginnings, fresh starts, new initiations, up levels, like stepping into new timelines. Yep. And simultaneously as a Mercury retrograde. So it's almost going to feel like what I've been saying, it's going to feel like a, maybe even like a false start. Mm -hmm. Where suddenly you feel like, okay, this portal, this, the last eclipse brought me an ending. So this new eclipse is going to bring a new beginning, right? A new door that opens. And you're like, oh, I think this is a thing I'm ready to walk through. And suddenly you're like, wait a second, there was a miscommunication or maybe there's a delay or something's not quite clear. Don't get stuck in the frustration. Mm -hmm. Take the time. Retrogrades are not here to hurt you or harm you. They're here to actually help you. They're for pausing. There are times to review things and reflect on things to double check things and triple check things. So if you're getting frustration because you're like, okay, I was waiting for the 
the fresh start to happen. And where is it? I thought this was going to be it, right? I'm feeling the momentum, things are moving forward. And suddenly it feels like, like I said earlier, a false start. Take a deep breath, reflect on something. You could be missing something. I had a client who was trying to get a contract signed during a Mercury retrograde and a similar astrology. And she was getting frustrated because she thought, okay, why isn't this happening? Why isn't this happening? Why isn't this happening? Right. And I said, if you're still waiting on other people's, there's a reason there's a delay. This, this retrograde isn't here to harm you. It's going to help you. So use the energy to your advantage. Look over the contract again, because I promise there's something you're missing. So yeah. she looked over the contract again and she noticed there was like a clause that she missed the first time she read it. Had she not had that pause and reflection period, she wouldn't have been able to then go in and notice something that was actually written in there that wasn't for her best interest, right? This is like a very specific example, but I'm saying if there's like false starts or delays, it's not time to get frustrated. It's time to review something, look something over again. Then at the end of April, we have a few really big astrology things that are happening. The retrograde's gonna end. We're gonna have a solar eclipse, the total solar eclipse on April 8th. And then mm -hmm. April 20th, we have a really big astrology transit happening, which I've been talking to you about because of your specific chart. So that's happening on July 20th. And that is um, the planet Uranus is gonna conjunct, which means it's gonna meet up in the sky at the same point with the planet Jupiter. Okay. Jupiter is all about growth, expansion, opportunity, hope, abundance. And Uranus is all about like shock and surprise mm -hmm. and sometimes like unexpected things, sudden things. So you have like these two, what we call benefic, sometimes maybe a little bit unstable because Uranus can be a little bit shocking and surprising. Planet meeting up with another planet that is all about abundance. Mm -hmm. Now, the way that this is going to manifest for everybody is going to be different because everyone has very specific placements in their charts, but essentially the whole point of April is to like expect the unexpected. Okay. Because we have like a Mercury retrograde, then we have a solar eclipse, then we have this like really beautiful, abundant transit that's going to affect a lot of people in a positive way. So it's almost like just when you thought all hope is lost, suddenly you strike gold. Okay. So, I mean, the way that I interpret all of that is with the with the the eclipse on the eighth and then the retrograde at the same time and and also with like the processing integration the purging the revisiting that we've all been doing january february march it feels like things are picking up they're feeling really good you're getting like all of these like sparks of of passion or new energies and opportunities coming in and then april hits the sparks and the new energies are still there inter internally percolating. But then with the retrograde, it's like, I'm trying to take action on the new and you get blocked. Trying to take action on the new and you get blocked. Um, but what you're saying is that's okay. Like I'm interpreting that as this energy of don't, don't interpret that as like a universe blocking you saying, oh, this isn't for you. Because I think that the new timelines are starting, but it's, it's great. It's interesting because it's like the new energy is coming in, but also we still get time to pause and reflect, um, which is what I really love. So, so maybe there's two, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, yeah. but maybe there's two timelines. And if you don't take the pause, you might jump uh, into something that's not right. Right. For you, right. Yeah. Maybe, I mean, there's so many ways that this can be interpreted and it's going to manifest differently for every single person, but it's, <laughs> It's not our job to, again, control and get in the way of eclipses. Eclipses yes. can be sometimes a little bit chaotic. It's our job to stay out of the way and watch and see what unfolds. Because if we take action during an eclipse, we may regret the action later. Okay, that makes sense. So just kind of pause, observe, um, revisit sort of what we've been working on. Um, and then also like when the new information comes and just sit on it, just observe it and sit on it. Um, it may not be time to take action, but then when April 20th comes around, this is when like pretty much that abundance, the revealing, the amplification, like that's when things can really just reveal themselves. And so are we good to go after April 20th to take action or when does the, when does well, the, the retrograde, retrograde, the retrograde end? ends on uh, tw the 24th Mercury moves direct okay. on the 25th, but we're still in like what we call a shadow period. Listen, okay. If, if you have no choice, but to you have to make a decision in something, I'm not telling you to like sit tight and don't do anything because like yeah. 
Asha, the astrologer went on and said, like, don't make any decisions. Sometimes we're forced to make decisions and we have no choice. Right. But the goal is to be active, not reactive. Yeah. So if you have to make a decision and you can't wait on things, I totally understand. Like sometimes life doesn't work out that way. However, if you do have time to integrate, use that energy and that time to your advantage. So you're not jumping on the thing that you, you're not jumping on the first thing just because it's there. It might still not meet. It still might not be the right thing. Yes. Yeah. We've I been think we're waiting still... for momentum and movement. Yeah. And now yeah. that it's going to start, people are going to be like, okay, this is it. I'm ready. I'm ready. Right. Yes. So maybe like the next thing that comes after the first thing. Right. Right. That's a, that's a really good piece of advice because I, I'm like the same way. Like I, I got sick and tired of waiting and like, now I'm just going to go for it. And you're like balls to the wall. And like, but, but there's, there's this, and then I want to talk about like the global energy, because I think that with the transformation that, that we are going to see in April, there's also going to be a transformation globally because everyone in the world is affected by astrology. Like everyone in the world is affected by this stuff. Um, oh my goodness. What was I going to say is I'm, I just lost my point. Um, yeah, no, I totally lost Think global, it. The global effect. Yeah, I got excited about the global thing and then I forgot my other point. Um, But yeah, let's, and maybe we'll go back to it, but let's just talk about the global stuff. So um, there is an energy of doomsday only because it's so transformational. And so um, I feel like we're really progressing, uh, but it's going to be a little bit chaotic and back and forth. So you brought something up to me just in our casual conversation a couple of months ago when we were talking about 2024. And I think it's really fascinating. I just want to like touch upon it. And then, and then I want to talk about this global, how, how the world's going to be affected by this, but you were talking about the election and something really fascinating that's happening with the election. Then Pluto is in Aquarius. Um, and then, and then we were talking about, you, you were mentioning that the last time Pluto was in Aquarius was during the U.S. Constitution. Um, so when the U.S. Constitution was formed is the last time these two planets were like aligned or whatever. I don't, I guess Aquarius isn't a planet. Um, but then there was also like a lot, like the American Revolution, right? And like, that's where we gained, well, we, that's where America gained independence so can you talk a little bit about that energy, um, especially during an election year and what we're going to find over the two months of the actual presidential election astrologically? I think it's so fascinating and it's stuck in my mind ever since we spoke about it. Yeah. <sighs> OK, how much time do we have? <laughs> OK, so let's go backwards a little bit to talk about like what Pluto means in general. Pluto in astrology, uh, even though in astronomy, it's not a planet anymore. It's still very much a very important planet in astrology. And Pluto is the planet of death, rebirth, transformation, metamorphosis. And it's the God of the underworld, like I said earlier. So it brings things to the surface so that we're forced to deal with it. It's like the shadow planet. The stuff that's hidden gets brought up for a reason right so that we face it so it's almost like stuff that maybe we've had a blind spot to or has been hidden from us or we've chosen to ignore pluto comes in and it's like it throws stuff in your face and it's like hello it's time to deal with this now so pluto what it does is what i like to say about pluto transits and cycles is that pluto is like the phoenix rising from the ashes Mm -hmm. it wants that like metamorphosis rising change right And everyone, all my clients love hearing that because they're like, oh, I want to be a phoenix. And what I like to remind people is that in order for the phoenix to rise, something has to burn down first. Die. Yep. Yep. And so a lot of times people are like, well, I'm ready for the change. I'm ready for the change. I'm ready for the change. And when it means things in their life have to crumble in order for the change to happen, that's when people lose their shit. Mm -hmm. You know? So Pluto has been in the sign of Capricorn for 15 years. And Capricorn previously... And Capricorn rules governments, structures, banks, banking systems. And when it moved into Capricorn, it was 2008. Mm -hmm. And what happened in 2008, right? We Mm -hmm. had the stock market crisis and the banking crisis. Pluto Mm -hmm. came in and it revealed the truth of what was really happening. It's like, there's not a solid foundation here. So we're going to crumble all of this to the ground so that we can rise and build back up like a phoenix rising from the ashes in relation to like banks and institutions and governments. Capricorn is also a sign that is all about limitations, rules, 
-hmm. like the right way to do things. If you talk to anybody that has a lot of Capricorn placements, they're like, okay, what is the formula to do this? What are the rules? We're going to follow the rules. Mm -hmm. And now Pluto has moved into Aquarius. This happened on January 20th of this year. Yeah. It briefly moved there for a few months last year, almost giving us a preview, but it really moved there January 20th of this year. And Aquarius is a sign that is all about rebellion. It's like mm -hmm. the rebel with the cause revolution, innovation, independence. So Capricorn, where this planet of death, rebirth, metamorphosis, change has been sitting in a sign of restrictions, limitations, and rules has now moved into a sign that's all about rebellion and revolution and breaking rules and wow. breaking structures. So yes. what we're going to see on a collect, by the way, this is, a pet, this is affecting everybody on an individual level, depending on where it's hitting their chart, right? But on a collective level, what it's doing is it's going to be burning things down. Everything that we've known, all the structures, all the rules, everything that we thought like the, the right way to do things is going to start crumbling down mm -hmm. and we're going to start to uprise. Aquarius is all about humanity and the collective. Mm -hmm. So it is causing massive spiritual awakenings on purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's burning down egos to build back up spiritually. That's wow. what's happening on a collective level. Now, what's interesting about, by the way, this is a 20 year cycle. So it's okay. not like suddenly this is all happening overnight. And we're like, this is a, com a continuous metamorphosis evolution that's going to keep happening. Now, what's interesting about the election specifically is September 1st, Pluto is going to move backwards and back into Capricorn from September 1st to November 19th. So it's almost like we're going to have all this innovative energy, kind of, which I think is interesting because it's going to be in the sign of Capricorn during election season in the United States. Yeah. So it's almost going to feel, if I had to make a prediction, it's almost going to feel like suddenly we're innovating. Suddenly we're all about authenticity and changing things and rebelling, rebelling and revolutionizing. And like, things are finally going to look different. And then it's going to feel like, wait, are we moving backwards again? What is this? Now we're limited again. Now there's structures at play. Now there's, I thought we were past this. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's going to be the same time that the election is going to be happening in November. Then on November 19th, it's going to go forwards again and move back into Aquarius. So it's almost like, the reality check is going to hit. Oh shit. We went back to old things now, yeah. we're, but we're supposed to be innovating. Right. We're supposed to be evolving and moving forward. So if I had to make a prediction, that's when that spark can start happening of the revolutionary area, like energy and the uprising of people, because last time Pluto was in Aquarius, we had the American revolution mm -hmm. when the Americans revolutionized against the British and we had the French Revolution, where the people in France literally killed their king mm -hmm. and revolutionized. Yep. So again, this is a 20-year transit cycle that is only just started in January of this year. It's very slow moving, yep. right? 20 years is a long time. Yep. So what we're going to start seeing is continuing to build this, this energy where, honestly, I think that stuff is going to burn down metaphorically maybe even physically right burn down to rise and build back up because that's what pluto does pluto builds destruction so that it can build back up and a lot of times pluto is related to power mm -hmm. and power yeah. dynamics yep so it's gonna feel like the people are losing their power and then they're gonna want to rebel against it and revolutionize against it and, and going to feel like it's going to get worse before it gets better i think personally absolutely and if we consider all of the solar flares that are hitting the planet the increasing of the human resonance really the increasing of consciousness i just think back to um and you even told me like i'm in like this 12 year cycle and like whatever was going on kind of career wise which is my mission work 12 years ago is now kind of coming full circle and like beginning again which is like that's really stuck to stuck out to me um, and so it just feels like when I first awakened, which was around 12 years ago, like, or I guess reawakened, the first thing I wanted to do was shout it from the rooftops, fuck the government, fuck all those guys, you know, like the world's corrupt. Like, you know, I think, I think about billions of people all over the world raising their vibration. And the first thing that they're going to do is question everything 
right? Yeah. That is what happens. And we've got this huge like revolution that's currently happening right now um, overseas in Europe. What you're seeing now is just the beginning of it. I know. And I'm, I'm excited for it. But as we all know, with revolution, with uprising, with billions of people questioning the system that's not serving anyone, comes destruction, comes the burning down of things. And 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 um, even like I think about the whole farmers movement that's taking place in Europe right now. And, you know, farmers are saying, let us keep our land and like, you know, stop pushing pesticides, you know, stop pushing for pesticides. And and uh, and there was a huge win with the EU just recently. So we're starting to see this revolution um, we're starting to see it happening. And um, and there's a sentiment of we have the numbers as long as we come together and can agree on something like stop you know pesticide use or stop buying up all of our free land or stop whatever it may be like we can come together agree on that and then push forward on it um and so yeah so i think that we are going to see this pattern especially in the next couple of years of this breaking down of that old structured system and when you told me a couple months ago about the astrology with the election I mean, first thing that comes to my mind is I really hope that we don't take a giant backstep with this election and just kind of bring in the old energy again. Um, we do need we do need revolution. We do need something different. We do need an uprising. We do need to shake up the system. Um, and but sometimes uh, in order I, to shake up this, unfortunately, right, like so many people are stuck in their own egos right i'm not talking about people that are on this channel that follow you right those are people that are spiritually woke or waking up yeah. but so many people are stuck in the matrix they're stuck in the ego right yeah. so sometimes things need to get really bad before they can get better because that's the catalyst to wake people up that's what exactly. pluto is pluto is a catalyst yeah. yep it's like if you're not going deep and doing the work you need to be doing i'm going to bring a catalyst into your life to force you to do it yep yeah and so i think that we're going to start to see catalysts internally which i think a lot of us have already been feeling there's a lot of symptoms that we've been experiencing and then we're going to see another catalyst externally like 2020 brought a global catalyst that that really initiated change like maybe something happens that catalyzes change on a global level again, that we can all like stand up and say, that's not right. And I'm going to say no to that. Like, it's got to be like, it almost has to personally affect us for us to come together and, and rise up against the system. And maybe we see that uprising, you know, when Pluto goes back into Aquarius after the election, like maybe that's when we really see it, or maybe it takes a couple of years to, to see the effects of that. So, um, yeah, we'll we'll definitely do another video leading up to the election to really talk about, you know, the transits and the, the planetary alignments and potentially even go over the candidates and like what's in their astrology. I think that that would be so. Oh, yeah. Fascinating. Oh, I can't wait to do that one. That's, yeah. Be yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah. Is there any other like last big points that you want to mention? And then we'll just kind of wrap up and let people know where to find you. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's, there's so much to talk about this year. There's just so much change. And I, I know I said this earlier, but we are really being challenged to release control or to release what we thought things were going to look like. Mm, okay. So with Pluto moving into Aquarius, with all of these eclipses that are going to be happening, we have two more eclipses. By the way, we have eclipses every six months and they come in pairs of two. There's okay. always one and there's another one two weeks later. So we have eclipse season again in the fall in September and October. So with all of these changes and we're going to have a Mars retrograde at the end of the year after the election, mm. which is something that also happens once every two years, everything is going to continue to build. And the number one thing that we are all being challenged on is like, where are you not waking up? Where are you still in your ego? Where are you still giving your power away? Because Pluto is about power, right? Where are you giving your power away? And that's where the fear and the anxiety comes in because you feel like people are taking your power away from you. And at the same time, like, what are you doing to change everything? But, but also, how are you going with the flow? Because a lot of what we're being forced to do is to release control of what things looked like. No one knows what Pluto and Aquarius is going to bring, right? Nobody. 
By the way, it's not an accident that AI was released last year when Pluto moved into Aquarius for a few months because Aquarius also rules innovation in technology and air travel and all of these other things. So we're going to see breakthroughs in that field as well. We can, I mean, we'll do another live, I'm sure, and talk about it, but we're going to see so many breakthroughs and innovation and technology as well. So none of us know what this is going to look like because none of us have ever lived through it before. Right. right. And when you think about all of the things that happened last time Pluto was in Aquarius, there was so much fear around, like two set, um, two previous iterations of this, when Pluto was in Aquarius, the, the printing press was formed. Hmm. And at the time, people were rebelling, like the, the powers that be were rebelling against people having books because they didn't want people to have knowledge in their hands. Right. 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 And suddenly, not only were people able to read books and gain information, they were able to start having personal libraries at yeah. home and learn things. So yeah. at the time, there was so much fear around the innovation of like, oh, my God, people are going to have books. What does this mean for the collective? Right. But it helped us on the long term level because it brought our consciousness right forward because suddenly we started learning about things. It helped expand our brains and our minds. We weren't just absorbing things that was limited of what we were being told. We were able to get our hands on information of our own accord. Yeah. So a lot of things are going to start changing in ways we don't even know right? Like no one, anyone that says they're going to be able to predict exactly what's going to happen is lying to you because none of us have ever lived through this. Yeah. So, so much of what we we're being challenged with right now is to like release control. I don't mean release control to the powers that be and like give away your autonomy. Don't that's, I don't want that to be misunderstood, right? Release control of what you think your future is going to look like. Right. Right. Because the timeline may shift, especially as we are collectively waking up, as we are collectively having ego deaths and collectively rising up in the consciousness, the free will can also change the timelines. So if somebody predicts something a few months ago, that can also shift depending on like where our collective energy is at. Yep. So your job and everyone's job is to go inward. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to do right now. If you are in fear, if you're in anxiety, it's because you are letting all these ex external factors influence you. Be yeah. careful what you're absorbing on the internet, on social media, on your television screens, right? We talked about Mars um, and Saturn conjuncting in Pisces and Neptune is in Pisces there. There is so much disillusionment right now of like what is real and what isn't real. So if you're watching all of this stuff and then you're watching all of this stuff, no wonder you have anxiety and you're confused because you don't know who to believe. Mm -hmm. But if you go inward and you're connecting with yourself on a spiritual level, it won't matter what people are saying outside of you externally because you're going to know what the truth is. Yeah, really, really honing in on that internal compass, you know, that we all have. And I think as the world gets more chaotic and crazier and more disillusioned and, and, and more stuff comes up, especially with these conspiracy theories. And I mean, it's so funny because like all of 2024, I feel like I've just been focusing on, hi, Khaleesi, hello. Um, all of 2024, I feel like I've just been focusing on conspiracy theories. But what you're saying about Pluto and Aquarius and like, you know, the underbelly coming to the light, like the dark side coming to the light and like everything being revealed. It's like, I'm curious about these things. I think people are curious about them. And um, and there's no more hiding that, not internally and not externally. So publicly, I think there is going to be much more questioning and there is going to be a lot more coming to light. And then internally, if we're not listening to those challenges, if we're not listening to those blockers, if we're not listening to those internal struggles, they're only going to get louder. So this is a perfect time to be introspective. And I recommend for everyone to really ask yourself at this time, who am I? What do I want? And where am I going? Because Although this may not be the right time to take action on it, and maybe that's, you know, after the retrograde, but the seeds are being planted and the seeds are being sowed, which means that we're watering those seeds, we're caring for those seeds, and they are about to sprout. So 
it's important to kind of get clear and then to question what you want and who you think you are and where you think you're, you're going because we're all finding ourselves, especially the ones who are awakening and awakened, we're finding ourselves really caught in between the old energy selves, the new energy selves, the old timelines and the new timelines. Um, so really incredible advice. If you guys want to see more of Asha, please go check out all of her links. Um, she's more active or most active on Instagram. Um, but if you want to see her back on my channel, please just comment below. And maybe we do like a quarterly thing or like we talk about eclipse season or, you know, like I, I'm just astrology's. Yes. Yeah. The election, all of that. And so, you know, astrology is not my forte. Um, plus, you've got a super cute cat. So like, you know, we can't forget about Khaleesi. Um, and uh, yeah, so let me know. And then we're going to link um, Asha's, all of her links are going to be in the description. And then we're also going to pin that comment as well, if you want to go check her out. And you do individual readings as well. So yeah, I do individual readings. Uh, I am booked about like two weeks now, two weeks out right now. But if, if you are in a dire situation, please send me a DM on Instagram and we will work something out. I am opening up more days and hours uh, to give some more private. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. To give more <laughs> private readings available to people because I realize this is like a very chaotic time right now. I oh, am yeah. more active on Instagram than, than YouTube, but I am by client's okay. request going to be posting a lot more long form content on YouTube that I'm just starting to do now. So there will be more to come for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you as you always, <laughs> We were laughing right before this about cat butts and how they like to show off their, their oh butts. Oh my God, I keep putting her down and she keeps coming back up. Can you yeah, stop? she just wants to be a part of it. Well, yeah. thank you everyone for tuning in. Do not hold any fear. We are in a time of transformation, which does mean the phoenix rising from the ashes and we've got to burn it all down first. So, um, you know, keep questioning everything, but really making those internal decisions and, and direction points. Um, as always, thanks for being here. I will see all of you in the fifth dimension.